What's up YouTube? Today, testing out the Faction Tactical V1s. I've skated them a little bit. Um, but yeah, we're gonna just do a few basic tricks and then it's really hot outside, so once we get back to the house, I'll tell you guys a little more about uh, my deeper thoughts. So it's really hot today, so the wax is like not really working, it's just melting and everything feels pretty sticky. I know these soul plates are normally pretty fast, but yeah, I think it's just the heat. Everything's really sticky. Did a couple soul tricks, a couple groove tricks. I'm gonna try like maybe a couple top acids and a few more soul tricks. Try to get things to slide a little better and then get out of here, because it's hot. Your nose bleed? Oh shit. Her nose is bleeding. Yucky. It's too hot and dry out here, man. The desert. Today we're talking about the Faction Tactical V1. Here's what it looks like. I put Kaiser Fluid 4 frames on it because that's the frame I'm probably most used to skating or spent the most time using. Um, and then the Beck BEK bullet wheels, first run we made. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and dive in and talk ab about this awesome skate. Before we talk too much about the skate, I do want to talk a little bit about the brand. I think Faction is a really cool brand that has a really unique vibe, especially in rollerblading. Um, I've been able to meet Clark and Lee, the guys who own and run it, um, and a lot of their team members at like Blade Cup and at Frankie's Invitational. And I do want to just give them a huge shout out because I think in a industry that's like very, very niche and where some brands or identities or, I don't know, there's just kind of like, it's a really niche sport, so everybody is like knows everybody, but then within that nicheness, there's also like separate tiny segments of niches, or I guess you could call them clicks and things get kind of weird sometimes. You can sense it at events and stuff. Certain people kind of only wanna hang out with certain people and it's kind of lame, but Clark and Lee have, with their brand, I think they've made a really, really cool kind of open door culture where I felt like they were one of the booths at Blading Cup that you could go hang out and feel comfortable at and not 
not really worry what other people are thinking and they they treat their customers really really well and they just seem like really cool guys to be around and i i really like kind of inclusive brands like that um and if i were ever to be talented enough that's one of they are one of the only brands i would want to skate for because i just think that they're like a pretty cool company and but yeah so let's go ahead and so shout out to them for making this awesome skate and let's go ahead and dive in and talk about it so in the footage you saw i did do it was really hot on most of it the one clip was from a couple days ago to evening sesh with my buddy jason and i was kind of struggling to get along with this boot my feet were hurting really bad and then the other clips which i filmed today it was really really hot but um i put a heel lift in and i wore thinner socks and went back to the stock liner and that helped the pain it was a lot more comfortable today so that's good um and let's yeah let's go ahead and dive into it let's talk about um how it performs each different kind of trick so soul tricks the soul space on it is it's ample but it's not huge and overbearing like it's small enough you can still kind of roll over and like get deep on soul grinds but it is big enough that i think it adds um a little bit of confidence uh to locking things this is their V2 sole plate that has like the Nike checkmark groove. I did, I didn't agree with how far back it was though. It felt like the groove was like really far back towards your heel more. So I did Dremel it out. I, I grinded it a few times and I, I kind of found out where I was making contact mostly with my Royales and Farves. And I kept the same kind of swoop shape. I just extended it out and I, I Dremeled it out and made the groove basically bigger, more like the size of an M12 groove. Um, that's a pretty minor gripe, but I do think whoever decided to put it that far back was, I guess if that's the way they want it, then that's good for them. But for me personally, I, I like the groove to be more centered. So the V1 sole plates for me, if I were to keep skating the skate, is probably more what I would lean towards. And then the negative side is, again, nothing too crazy. It doesn't get in the way or trip you up, but it is definitely big enough to do negative tricks. I don't think I got any clips of negative tricks, but I did do a couple negative mistrials on both feet. And so, yeah, that's the sole plate, and it does really good with sole tricks. Groove tricks felt good. You can, like, almost... It's actually kind of a steez leech. I didn't realize until I looked through my footage, but, like, it's really easy to get boot down on Royales and Farves. But it's almost so easy that like you don't have to bend your knees so i accidentally was more lazy than i wish i would have been and that's not a big deal if, if there is a skate where it's really easy to get boot down especially with this frame that has the deeper groove you just need to consciously make an effort like okay to make it look good i have to bend my knees and squat a little more um and unities and torques and stuff felt pretty good on it and yeah so that's kind of how all the tricks oh top side so this is really interesting to top side because it is really stiff down lower because it's a carbon shell but this this cuff i'll show you here this cuff is so flimsy so it's like it almost feels like you're not riding a cuff because it's so soft so it's like really stiff down low really loose and floppy up high so there's a part where like it kind of fights you to get topside and then there's a point where once you bend your knee enough it gets past and it's like boom and it like locks you topside which was a kind of a different sensation for me um i definitely think that brings me to another point um but yeah top sides top sides are super doable i was able to top sole and top acid um but that brings me to the cuff this is the one thing i would recommend them changing if on the v2 uh it, one of the reasons it's so flimsy here is you see all this like empty space right there most cuffs have plastic that go kind of they arc more in a direction this way and that like sharp corner there is all filled in with plastic i would i would do a different cuff personally um but i have heard the icon cuffs fit really well on this skate and the fr cuffs um work really well on this skate so i probably will uh I probably will throw an FR cuff on here and let y'all know how that feels at some point. Um, but yeah, the cuff is, in my opinion, if you like really, really flexy cuffs, you'll like it. 
I like a little bit more ankle support because I've broken my ankle a few times. Um, which brings me to another thing. So it's a flat heel skate. Um, and when I, I skate at flat heel, even with the, uh, even with the heel pads that they come with, so they come with this little heel pad that I like, I like to put on top of the insole inside the liner and it only adds like maybe three or four millimeters of heel lift. So it's not a whole lot. Um, but that's like their heel pad and it's kind of like a little arch support. So for me, it feels, I have high arches. So for me, it feels good to put inside the liner on the heel bed. Um, so I tried skating it with just the stock shock absorber and the stock liner and it felt really flat footed and I felt like I was falling back and even just coming off like normal size ledges and stuff felt like there was quite a bit of shock bouncing up my foot because it is a carbon shell so it you do feel more in it I think and then yeah I felt like I was falling back a lot which I don't love that sensation of like the icons I've skated, the gods I've skated, like any flat hill skate for me takes a lot of getting used to. And so I usually have to pad them way out. But with this one, I didn't dare pad it out too much because if you put too much heel lift in it, then it lifts your ankle above the carbon shell. And if your ankle is lifted above the carbon shell, then that's like a fulcrum point that your ankle can break on. And that's really scary, especially for me where I've already broken my ankle before. I don't, I wasn't a big fan of that. But what I found worked pretty good was I had just the, the white heel pad from the standards that I was skating a while ago. I put that in and then I put this back in the liner and I skated it and it gave me more of that heel lift feeling that I, I like. Um, but it did lift my ankle maybe a little more out of the shell than I would have wanted to, but it wasn't so bad that it was unskatable. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of that. And this skate does, so this is the nine and a half, 10 shell. I'm a 273, 274 Mondo. So I'm like right there at nine and a half. And if you're more of like a 10 or a little bigger than a size 10 in US, I would say get the 10 and a half shell, 10 and a half, 11 shell. Cause for nine and a half, 10 shell, this felt pretty tight. And so I did have to heat mold it after I heat molded it. It felt significantly better. The, and that's with the stock liner. The stock liner is very, I'll take it apart here for you. The insole is it's whatever. It's just a stock foam insole. It's not good or bad. It's just, it's a little bit of padding and it's there. I didn't hate it. Didn't love it. It's just, it is what it is. And then the, the liner's pretty sick though. It's like really thick and plush and cushy and it fills in the carbon shell really well, but almost too well, cause it felt really tight. Even after I heat molded it, it felt really tight. And then that brings me to, I did skate them with intuitions for a day. And that was like really painful for some reason. I got a lot of hot spots under the pads of my feet on the intuition inside the faction so then today when i went and got more clips at the af skate park i put the stock ones back in but i wore really thin socks and it was a warmer day so i think between all those things my and i didn't tie the laces as tight because if you tie the laces too tight you get bad circulation and your feet go numb anyway but yeah so today was much better thin socks are if a skate feels just a little too tight try thin socks or even sockless. It can make a big difference. Um, but yeah, so the fit is pretty good. I would say they run a hair smaller than true to size, but pretty close to true to size once you heat mold and break them in. And that's the thing, I've only skated these like for four or five sessions so far. So I'm sure if I keep skating them, they'll break in more and expand and get more comfy to my foot. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much everything that I, I think about these. I do think it is a super solid skate for people who like flat heeled skates or who are flat footed. I have really high arches and am used to raised tail skates. So it's hard for me to want to dedicate more time to this. I am going to do, so I am going to keep giving it a chance for a few more months. I'm really bummed because like I said, 
before. Um, the vibe that the guys who run the brand have created and the overall brand itself is really, really sick. And with John Fromm being added to their team and China being a female skater on their team, like their team is stacked and it's really awesome. And I really like, like I said, I like, I like the vibe and inclusivity that the brand seems to represent, but this skate was kind of hard for me to get along with. If I'm being honest, it just, I don't know if it's from my ankle injuries or what, but I, it was really hard for me to get comfortable and confident in it. I was able to do like all the normal tricks that I normally can do in new skates, but it wasn't, there's some skates where I can just kind of like hop in. Like I was riding a buddy's pair of sways the other day and um, I wasn't 100% comfortable right away, but I was able to like feel good and do most of my tricks right away. This one, I had to kind of coax it out of myself a little more but that's that's what brings me to my other point though is like with all these reviews i've been doing and all the different skates i've tried where i'm pretty close to have been lucky enough to try almost everything the industry has to offer that's available so far there's a couple new brands coming out that i still need to check out but something i've learned is the skate doesn't matter that much you can get used to and your body can adapt and learn how to skate anything the biggest thing is fit and comfort. So if a skate fits you and it's comfortable, you can learn all the tricks on it, especially today with like all the new aggressive technology. There's not a skate on the market that's not possible to do all the tricks on. Um, there are some skates that make some things easier for certain things. And then there's some skates that have advantages in different ways. But if you're a young person watching this that doesn't have a lot of disposable income to just be buying a bunch of skates, cause I'm gonna tell you, I'm kind of over it. I've spent a lot of money on skates I didn't necessarily need for this channel. But um, if, you, if your focus is to get better at skating, then find something that doesn't hurt your foot and just skate it till it's dead. And then honestly, like if you, and if it worked and you didn't have any major complaints, I would say keep buying that same skate over and over again because your body, the like, you have neural pathways and stuff that like your um, neurophysiologically, it's gonna learn and get used to something. So for example, like in the snowboard world is like Sean White was known as like one of the most consistent competitive snowboarders and one of like the best. And I've talked to several people who knew him and his pro model snowboard hardly changed at all in like the 15 year span where he was dominant in the half pipe because he just, he knew it felt good. He knew it was familiar and he just wanted to keep it the same. And I think that says a lot for progression and just um, progression and stability and just staying consistent. That's the word I was looking for. For progression and consistency, if, if, if your body doesn't have to get used to a new thing every time you skate, you're going to progress better and longer. And that's, that's something I would encourage all people to do. I'm a dork and I have this obsessive thing where I always think that like something new or different might help me and it probably doesn't, but I have a lot of fun making these videos and I have a lot of fun trying new tech because I'm a gearhead and a nerd. Um, but yeah, so sorry for that little side rant, but just something I thought you all should know. But yeah, so that is the Faction Tactical V1. I think it's a great skate designed by awesome people. And I think for some people, it's gonna be really, really fun and awesome to skate. So if you're into um, floppier cuffs and carbon skates with good response, I think it's something you should definitely consider and check out. Um, thank you for watching and make sure to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one.